I want to mention before this video starts that all my lenses are like uncapped, they're not protected, so is my camera body, so don't rage at me for that. I'm doing that because I want you to see everything raw, and if I get a fingerprint on there, God forbid, um, I'm going to have to deal with it. My consequences for my actions, don't worry, I'm a grown boy. I can take care of my toys. Oh God, that sounds so wrong. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Warren's gonna talk about some lenses, but who cares really? I think I want to talk about lenses. God, I'm good at songwriting. Lenses are just as important, if not more important, than your camera because your lens actually makes the image. Your camera just lays back. It's like, it's like saying, in order to suntan, the most important thing to have is your chair, when really, the most important thing for suntanning is having a sun to tan you, whereas the chair is more just sort of like the camera. Or you and the chair together is more like the camera. Anyway, uh, and I'll tell you why. Basically, your image is affected by your lens in a couple of different ways. There's two numbers you have to know. One is your focal length, and the other is your aperture, or your f-stop, or your iris. Um, and uh, I'll tell you what those mean. The first one is represented by millimeters. And what that means is, the lower your millimeters are, the wider your image will be. And the higher your millimeter number is, the more zoomed in your image will be. This here is a 17, sorry, 17. It's a 55 to 200 millimeter zoom lens by cam. What that means is that 50 mil is pretty universal, sort of like what we see, it's like a very, you could pretty much shoot a whole entire movie on 50 mil. Um, so it goes from 55 mil and it zooms all the way in to 200 mil. However, um, it's not constant aperture, and I'll tell you what that means in a second. Your aperture, or your f-stop, or iris, or whatever you want to call it, there's definitely a technical name for it, but I'm not going to confuse you, it's all sort of the same thing. For now, I'm just going to call it your f-stop. Your f-stop is the number that represents how much light your uh, lens is letting through. And that number represents uh, how open your iris is in your camera, your aperture. And let's just take a look at this. See this 50 mil Nikon right here? Oh, awkward. I can't. Oh, there we go. Ready? Beep, 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 and it just gets sized down to a tiny little pinhole, or I can open it right up. Um, the lower your number is, the more wide open it is. So this is f1.8 wide open, letting in tons of light. And what that also means is the lower your number is, the more light it's letting through, the bigger that hole is, the more blown out of focus your background's gonna be. You're gonna have a nice shallow depth of field. Or your foreground. The more this is closed up, the darker your image will be, but you'll be able to capture more in focus. Uh, and what that means is that it's good for like running gun sort of stuff where you don't have time to pull focus, but if you're doing artistic stuff, you might wanna consider that shallow depth of field if you can control your focus, maybe your focus pull or you're doing it yourself. So, your f-stop, this is like a range from like f1.8 all the way up to 22. 22 is like a pinhole, and then f1.8 is wide open. Lower the number, wider the hole. And uh, higher the number when it comes to your focal length, the more zoomed in it is. 200 mil is pretty zoomed in. I have a lens that goes all the way to 300 mil. Uh, as for Canon. I also wanted to point out, right next to me here, we have a Canon 50mm f1.8. This is a Nikon 50mm f1.8. However, there's two big differences. One, this lens is old. This is a lens from the 70s, I'm pretty sure. And it works on Nikon cameras today. Nikon, the Canon doesn't do the same thing. Their mount changed a while ago, and so you can't use vintage lenses on your new camera. So, the one difference, old, new. But, that does not mean good and bad. This lens, although it would probably be cheaper to buy than this lens, I actually haven't looked up how much this was because my dad actually gave it to me from his old Nikons. Um, this is plastic, it's cheap, and it's definitely not as sharp as this. This is, in my opinion, a better lens. Uh, even though this is new. It's called the Fantastic Plastic or the Nifty 50. There's tons of different names for it. Not to say it's a bad lens. I mean, I shoot almost everything I've ever shot on this lens. Um, the entire pep rally videos, all that, it's all shot pretty much on this lens, except for sometimes I'll switch out to the 
my stock 18 to 55 millimeter lens. 18 is getting pretty wide. Um, pretty much the widest you'd ever want to go on like a camera sensor is like 8 mil, and that's going to be like a fisheye. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, you can pretty much see everything I've shot on this cam on this lens. If you look at the pepper alley videos or anything like that, like all those um, kind of cinematic looking shots are pretty much all shot on this. And then more like the action stuff, like when people are running and all that kind of stuff where I get wide shots. That was my stock kit lens zoomed all the way out to 18 millimeter. Because that's pretty much the advantage to having those kit lenses, the fact that you can zoom out. You can get a pretty wide shot because 18 is pretty wide. Um, more reasonable, like a wide angle lens. I wouldn't quite call it wide angle, but I would say I would count wide angle at about like 14 mil because then it's, you know, you're getting pretty wide, maybe 12. So... Nikon, Canon, Pentax, Olympus, Hasselblad, I think they make lenses. Uh, every lens, those numbers will mean the exact same thing. It's a universal thing. It's not like, oh, Canon calls it the F1.8. You know, it's uh, your f-stop and your focal length are universal. So, let's sum it up. What we've learned here today. Oh yeah, before I do that, constant aperture. What does that mean? Well... When you zoom from a uh, 55 to 200 with this lens, the aperture actually stops down. At 55, it's open up to 4, and then at 200, it stops all the way down to 5.6. Like, it, it staggers as you zoom in, to all the way to 5.6, and that's just because it's a, a fairly cheap lens. I actually like this lens quite a lot, surprisingly, even though it's not um, exactly uh, the best quality lens you could get. Uh, it's not constant aperture, which means as you zoom in, it doesn't stay at like f 2.8. It actually goes from a fairly high f 1. Uh, fairly high f 4, sorry, to 5.6. And uh, constant aperture lenses usually have a lower aperture, not all the time, but usually they'll have a lower aperture like f 2.8 or 3.5 or something, and they'll stay there as you zoom in, and those cost a lot. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, let's sum it up. Aperture, or your f-stop, uh, is pretty much the number that represents how wide open your lens is. So a lower number means bigger hole, all the way to f-22, or I think it maybe even goes higher than that in some lenses. It's like a pinhole, and then there's, you know everything in between. And the lower that number is, the more the shallower depth of field you'll get, and then the higher it is, you know almost everything will be in focus, say, if you get like f-22. Or everything actually will be. And uh, the other number is your focal length, which is the the lower the number, the wider angle your shot will be. Say like a 12 millimeter lens will be super wide, and then say uh, 80 millimeter lens will be fairly zoomed in. Whereas you can also find like uh, like a 300 mil lens, like I was talking about, and you're going to get zoomed in pretty darn far. <sighs> is that it? Pretty much. You could stop watching now if you want. I'm going to throw a little bit of extra information at you, though. Uh, one nice thing to know is that there are lenses that aren't made by, say, Canon that you can use on a Canon camera. And when it comes to lenses, you tend to pay a lot for brand. Rokinon is a company that makes fantastic lenses, and um, they work on Canon. They, they have different mounts for different uh, Canon manufacturers, manufacturers sorry. and, uh, yeah, they make nice, sharp, well-built lenses, smooth focus rings, uh, yeah, they're, they're super cool, they're really great for Cine too, um, they have some Cine lenses that cost like $599, and they compete with lenses that cost like $2,599, uh, they're, they're just well-priced, really nice, really well-built, uh, there's also things like if you get a camera that has a really universal sensor size, like a Panasonic, which has like a GH2 or something, or GH3, which has a micro four third sensor. Uh, you can pretty much mount anything you want on there. You can pretty much find any lens in the whole world that you like, buy the right mounting or uh, adapter for it, and it'll work on your camera. So, spend good money on your lenses. Uh, I hope that this has sort of inspired you to sort of not pay so much attention to this guy, because in the end, it's, I mean, it's nice to have this, but these days, cameras are sensors that are wired up to image processors, and they get thrown onto your SD card, then you put them on your computer. Uh, what, in my opinion, matters more, and a lot of people's opinion matters a little bit more, are the lenses. And uh, 
that was actually kind of a, a more followed rule a little while ago when these video DSLRs weren't out yet, and there was no push to have interchangeable lens camcorders. Uh, because of these now being great at shooting video, now there are interchangeable lens camcorders. It wasn't that it wasn't really doable, it's just that there was no real push for it. And people, what they were doing is they were running around like cam XHN, like XHA10 uh, camcorders or HVX 200s with Panasonic, and they were just throwing these 30 by 5 millimeter like film lens adapters on the front of this camcorder, and then they put their lenses on there, and that was weird and it was awkward and it cost a lot. And uh, then Canon came out 5D Mark II. This is actually a T2i. And, uh, yeah, pretty much changed the game because for the first time, big sensors, swappable lenses were totally accessible and within price range. And then the, five, the 550D or the T2i came out and that was like $800 versus like $2,500 and people were like, oh my god, and they got obsessed. So, lenses are sweet. You just got to know what you're talking about and you got to spend the money in the right places. See you guys. Worn out.